what do your disco edits sound like? What do you want to achieve with your disco edits? Do you want to just do straight up edits where you just do a couple of loops and a couple of beats? Or do you want to take them even further and kind of make them a little bit more housey with a lot of house techniques in there, but keep them as edits, but flip them around? There are so many options to do an edit these days. Now, obviously, edits have been around for well over 40 plus years now. Um, but in the last 10 years, there's been an explosion of edits, you know, um, in the new disco scene, so to speak. But it's branched out into many, many other areas, into funk, into soul, etc. However, there's a million of them knocking about now. And it's easy to do now because back in the day when you needed tape to tape, you needed a certain amount of equipment and also a certain amount of patience and splicing. And it was all hands on deck. However, now you can do it at the blink of an eye on any kind of door, chop it up, blah, 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 and away you go. So um, what I want to show you here is how to create an edit um, in a more of a house structure arrangement sort of technique, sort of layout, um, by using just drum samples, drum hits, drum one shots, the loops of an original, the vocal of the original, and I've added a lead line uh, because that's my kind of signature mark anyway. So I'm going to go through it now and show you what I've done. So the edit in question is Thelma Houston's classic Don't Leave Me This Way. Um, and it's been done a couple of times. Everyone sampled the bass line from this. It's been done in a variety of ways. However, I've just done it in my way um, as I see fit. Now, the track, as you can see, is seven and a half minutes long, which is quite long for these days. You know, a lot of people have very little patience these days with dance music. They want everything to be five minutes or even four and a half. However, let's stick to the original sort of, you know, ethos and do a seven and a half minute work workout. So I've started the track with some loops of the track. I've originally taken the original version um, and I've taken away the vocal. I've extracted the vocal um, and it's not such a, it's not a bad one actually because some of the vocal extraction softwares can leave a lot of artifacts underneath and it can be a bit disheartening. But I've taken the best parts of the, um, of the original and remove the vocals. And I've also got the acapella anyway, so I've not had to extract that for the acapella. The acapella exists, it's out there. Um, but the instrumental, um, nevertheless, I've tweaked it with the extraction. And I've got some pretty cool loops out of it. However, I'm gonna go through it, I'm gonna just highlight key parts and go from there. So it starts off with a high pass filter and a bass loop. I'll show you all of the frequencies, like you can see all the automation, like that. There's your loop on its own. Snare and kick on top, reverse crash. And then a vocal at the bottom here, there's a vocal snippet. So as you can see, it's building up like that. As you can see, it's now getting to the main hook. There you go you get the idea of that it's quite full-on it's quite housey in its structure and it's and the techniques employed with the filtering and i've really gone mad on it um but the the key point of this is what i've done is i've reversed it i've flipped it around i've not put the first verse at the start like you know you would expect obviously with edits the best thing to do is to take out the main parts and use the bits that aren't used so much 
But however, this is more like a remix, I suppose. But the edit formula is employed completely. So I've got vocal um, ad-libs at the start. Then all of those vocals there are basically what came at the end of the acapella. So the ad-libs, you know, the, the outro sort of um, improvisation. Um, at this point... So, I mean, it's just all build up. And then the chorus. So I've flipped it around. So I've done ad libs, build up, chorus. But then what I do is I go into the first verse halfway through the track. Like this. comes around again so we've kind of flipped it on its back totally which is one of the key things to do in an edit um and then we've got this bit here which is the the, the funky bass line loop that comes out at the end so it goes like this. and then Adding something of your own in, a, in an edit is always a good thing because it gives, you know, shows a bit of originality as well, you know, or you're adding to the track. Rather than just looping stuff, add something that is your key signature. And for me, it's lead lines. Um, it's something that I really do. So this lead line I've put in here, because the track is in C minor, I think. It's in C minor 7. So I can play the blue scale in it. And it just worked a treat. So I'm going to solo it like this lot. It's just really raw. So if I put it on with the music, you'll hear it really beefs it up. The outro again, which is basically the intro. So it's just, it's just that, but that's on a high pass. But when you filter it out, you go on a low pass. Drop it down. So that's it. That's basically the outlines of a kind of house arrangement sort of structure with an edit. Um, basically all I've got is just go through the sounds let's just loop the part of the track that is you know the main body I suppose it, it, that will do here like this let's go from this bit so you've just got a really raw kick straight up 808 at uh, 909 hi-hat a clap with a load of reverb on a snare with an off snare like that and a top Congo's in there. The loops. 
crash. Y va el cubo. So each section is basically, it's just the same drums pretty much all the way through. Your loops, with your loops, to make sure that your EQ, you know, kind of takes some of the bottom end out. You know, try not to be too bassy on the actual loop itself, because don't forget that's already been EQ'd at some point, um, and probably remastered if it's ended up on the internet. So um, you've got that, and also, Experiment with the free the fil the filter frequencies like this. Like what I've done here, I've gone really crazy. I've done a real '90s sort of mad. <laughs> and obviously, it's got that delay on the end as well, which is important. So obviously, automate your delays so that they don't just cut off. <laughs> So there you go. Um, there's some of the key things to do in an edit to make your edits come to life a bit more rather than just doing straight loop and straight, you know, drums on top. Put a bit more effort into it. Do big drum build-ups, dropouts, little filters, you know, add a lead line, add a string, add a piano, add a, a funky bass pattern, whatever you want to do. You know, just make sure that you kind of put your stamp on it, you know, to make it stand out because the, let's face it everything's pretty much been done these days um all the classic tracks have been done um i don't know how many times i've heard uh, the salsa catalog been rinsed i don't know how many times i've heard sheik's catalog being rinsed it we're running out of ideas so if you're going to do something that's classic and obvious add your own touch to it rather than just looping it and banging it out and hoping for the best so i hope they've taken from that that's uh how i would make a edit with a bit of a house crossover rather than a straight edit. So, you know, if you understand what I mean, you'll get it. Um, try and get the acapella, take the loops, try and extract the vocal from the original song so then you've got more to, more loops to play about with. Because back in the day, um, when we sampled tracks, all we had was the, the vinyl, the record to go off, or the CD. You didn't have the opportunity to, um, you know, extract the vocals. It was impossible. Um, but now it's possible, so it's it's a great um, invention. Obviously, there's a long way to go for it to be absolutely crystal clear, but some of the stuff that I've heard and extracted myself is pretty impressive. So take advantage of that. If you want to do a track, extract the vocal and chop the loops up and EQ it and so forth, and you'll be surprised at the results. So that's it, guys. Keep your drums simple. Kick, hat, snare, clap, tops, done. Don't go mad on loads and loads of layers. You don't need 10 layers of loops and beats and perks. You need three or four, and that's it. Thank you, guys. I hope that's... Uh, a bit of an influence for you and a bit of an inspiration. So take that and do what you will. Thank you and I'll see you soon.